It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. This year's Emmys was definitely one hell of a party. Before I talk about the main topic at hand, I'm gonna bore you guys with trivial details and informations that you guys probably had no idea prior to this video and probably don't care, but I'm still gonna talk about it anyway because it's my channel. When it comes down to poll data, the vast majority of Americans personally believe in the existence of the devil and that the majority of Americans also believe that demons have a capability to possess humans. The latest YouGov research has found that more than half of all Americans, 57%, believe in the existence of the devil and a slight majority, 51%, believe in possessions by evil spirits. Regardless of religious identity levels of belief, top 50% except for Jews, totally reject the idea of Satan. Born again Christians are more likely to believe in the devil, 86%, and possessions, 72%. So the question then becomes, well, geez, Tyler, where do the ideas of, like, you know, Satan and demons, all that stuff, come directly from? The character of Satan first appeared in the book of Job, and it's like the oldest book in the Bible. It was written down roughly in the 7th and 4th century BCE. The word Satan actually refers to an accuser or adversary, and according to the book of Job, Satan, the accuser or the adversary, was actually part of this divine council with the God of the Bible, Yahweh, and of course, Satan on many different occasions as Yahweh, the God of the Bible, is it actually okay to just torment Job? And on many different occasions, the God of the Bible said yes, and he continued to torment Job throughout the whole entire story to make sure that this guy never loses his faith and to be, you know, trustworthy to God. It's a very, like you could say, a terrible book to read. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, it's where the ideas of Satan and Lucifer combine together. It says right here, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which dust wicked to nations? Now in classic mythology, we do know that Lucifer was actually his own separate deity. It says right here, Lucifer in classic mythology is the morning star, i.e. planet Venus at dawn personified as a male figure bearing a torch. Lucifer had almost no legend, but in poetry he was often herald of the dawn. But Tyler, what about the talking snake? I mean, surely the talking snake is Satan, right? Uh, yes and also no. The book of Genesis was actually written down between the 15th century and the 13th century BCE. When it came down to the idea of depictions of snakes in the ancient world, they have a sense of duality, especially within the ancient Mesopotamian cultures, which influenced stuff like the Bible. For example, let's take the case of Gilgamesh. It says right here, they sail over the waves, and when they reached the place, Gilgamesh dived over the side of the boat, and swam down to the bottom of the sea, and the musty depths he found the plant of immortality with a storm, like a rose, and grabbed hold of it, and although it pricked his hand, he held it fast and returned to the surface of the water and climbed into the boat. The sea captain sailed the boat back to the shore and set Gilgamesh on his homeward journey back to Uruk. When he had walked 30 miles, he stopped for the night by a fresh pool of water, his limbs were hot and weary from the journey, and water was tempting. He went into it and washed himself. But while he was in water, a snake sensed a sweet plant that Gilgamesh had left on the rock. The snake came out silently and stole away back to his hole, where he ate it. After he ate this magical plant, the snake felt rather strange. His old weakling skin began to feel loose and crumbly. Soon he slivered out of it and wickled away wearing his new shiny youthful skin. Another example of this is Tiamat who comes directly from the Aluma Elish 
it says that Tiamat is the Mesopotamian goddess associated with the primordial chaos in the salt sea best known from the Babylonian epic the Illuma Elish and all versions of the myth following the original, Tiamat always symbolizes the forces of chaos which threaten the order established by the other gods such as Murdoch. She is depicted in later periods as a female serpent or dragon based upon vague descriptions of her. It was not until 96 CE where the idea of Satan being the devil actually combined together into one thing. To keep a long story short, basically Satan first appeared in the book of Job. He was combined together into Lucifer, a separate deity in Greek mythology, and of course the ideas of the snake and the devil combined together, and so over a gradual period of years, the ideas became one and the same. But Tyler, the history of this stuff is so boring. Why are you telling us this details? Get on to the main topic of the video. Fine, fine, fine. I will not bore you guys with the history lesson at all. From here on out, I'm gonna talk about the main video. Personally, I think that these kind of people don't actually believe in the devil. I honestly think they're doing that performance just to tick people off and that they know that their actions gonna tick people off and that's the main reason why they did it and surprise surprise many conservatives on the internet are really upset about that idea. The Grammy featured Sam Smith's demonic performance and it was sponsored by Pfizer and the satanic church now has an abortion clinic. American Christians need to get to work. This atrocity should be denounced by every music artist in the nation. Instead, there's a sympathy of silence. The depravity in our nation is reaching devastating levels. We must pray for God's mercy. Of course, Tucker Colson did a whole entire video about this. And so did Pierce Morgan. I think the main reason why people do performances like this is to also recoup from their religious trauma. Because back then, and continue to this very day, a lot of things by many Christians, not all of them of course, are deemed to be very much demonic. Let's take for example the issue of playing Dragons and Dungeons and Dragons. Now Dungeons and Dragons was actually considered to be basically demonic by many Christians during the 1980s. When I was growing up, stuff like Pokemon and video games and Power Rangers was also cause, of course, like, you know, scares among Christians, and they call it demonic too. They said that being gay was basically demonic, and so I'm thinking that the main reason why so many artists do this kind of stuff is to actually recover from their trauma and to take ownership about the trauma that they actually experienced in the past thanks to their upbringing. There's a book that's actually called How God Changed Your Brain, and it goes into great details about this phenomenon, about how people feel like when they believe in the idea of hellfire. It says right here that young children have a particular difficult time with stories describing God's anger. For example, we know that nightmares are directly related to a child's reaction towards frightening images and hostile words, and we know that images of persuasive and authoritative God increases a child's anxiety, not just in Christians, but in Muslim children as well. And a study conducted in United Arab Emirates, psychologists explore the prevalence of fear and 340 adolescents. Of the 60 fear items listed, belief in the devil and fear of breaking a religious law invoke extremely negative reactions in 50% of the subjects. If I learned anything from this controversy, it's that basically grown adults are just prone to superstition. They're not necessarily prone for reason. And because of the whole entire idea has been instilled to their heads, that's why, of course, like a lot of people, can tend to internalize stuff. And that, to me, is not necessarily healthy. And so because many people internalize those kind of awful ideas, by the time they leave the religion and do other things, I think that's the main reason why they would dress up as devils because they actually internalize those awful messages that Christianity has preached towards them when they're younger. And so I think that's like the main reasons why artists like that guy in the video actually dress up as a devil to actually, you know, make fun of the stuff that they grew up with. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video.